Relentless positivity. That's pretty much been my mantra, actually, and um, it's one that I've lived my life with, and particularly one in the arts. So I had a bit of a mission 13, 14 years ago. The children that I knew and loved from regional Australia were starting to see music as a passive activity. You just watch someone else do it on telly, or you watch someone else do it on YouTube. So if you combine that with a mindset that music literacy is just too hard, it's a skill set that is not even needed anymore, it's for the elite few, then you have a mindset that is just completely one of scarcity. So my privilege as the artistic director of Murrumbilla Voices has been to move a region and their whole mindset from one of scarcity to abundance. And the way I've done that is through the choirs of Murrumbilla Voices. I have three choirs. I have over 100 primary boys, if you can imagine such a thing, <laughs> primary trebles, and well over 100 primary girls, and then a high school group called Maxed Out. Now, I've always believed that life was absolutely full of possibilities. That's the way I was brought up. And I must have uh, missed the, uh, the KPIs that said you grew up in rural Australia and you couldn't be a female conductor. So oh, here I am, that's what I do. Um, but what has been the most incredible thing for me is that music literacy and making music has unleashed my creative capacity. And in turn, it's given me the skills and the opportunity to share that. And that's been one of life's great joys for me. And I hope for all the hundreds and thousands of children that have been involved and the professional choreographers and dancers and composers and artists that have worked with us. So I thought what I should do is put this down and invite you to do what I ask the children to do every year when they're on tour with me. I go to their town, I go to their school, and I meet them, and we learn how to read music. So I have three minutes and eight seconds, no, seven, and we're going to learn how to read music. So are you ready to get to primary school? Find your happy place. <laughs> Good. Rub your hands, and don't pinch the person beside you. Good. Oh, you're so cute. In fact, you're excellent. You show me your excellent face. Show me your thumbs. Oh, you are so cute. Smile. You know that really cheesy one from year two? Without your teeth. Great. Now I want you to get your second finger and I want you to do the groovy dance. Groovy. Groovy. I am so groovy. Yes, we're, yeah. Mm. So, show me excellent. Smile. Groovy. Mm -mm. Now, music was originally written on one red line. So in honour of that, blood going down, say after me. Blood going down. And now, very scarily, blood going up. <laughs> I come to suck your blood. <laughs> mm, excellent. <laughs> yeah, that'd be groovy. Thanks. <laughs> Darling, show me your fourth finger. Darling. And now, whilst hitting the person beside you, you're fabulous. <laughs> Show me, darling. Darling, you're fabulous. Oh, and you are. Now, the interesting thing about this as I whip out the power of technology is you've probably seen that sign, that squiggly thing. The reason there's five lines is because you have five fingers. And in fact, if I go to this next one, excellent. Groovy, blood. Darling, you're fabulous. And if I show you with this hand, if you can take it like this, put your thumb down. F, say it. F, A, A, C, C, E. F, A, C, E. In the space, you find your face. Mm -hmm. And... There it is. Now, this didn't take a long time. Music literacy is not a burden. It is not that it is too hard. We've, it's just a skill that we've forgotten. But the opportunities that being able to read something like this 
unleashes for my candidates, and in fact for all of us, is absolutely extraordinary. And this is why I bother, and why we bother using art music. So if we had a little longer, I'd find a C and we'd sing that. And the wonderful thing about this is all of those notes fit in your hand, because this is pre-iPad. <laughs> and it is portable, it's environmentally friendly, and it's yours. So, um, as you give yourself a round of applause for your music literacy, I'd like to introduce you to the choirs of Murrumbilla Voices. In fact, there's 60 children that are about to come on stage now from regional New South Wales. As my beautiful children come on stage, I'd, um, oh, they are just so gorgeous. They represent the most remote and regional third of New South Wales. They met together yesterday for our first rehearsal. Um, what I'd like to do is take this opportunity to acknowledge um, the incredible support that I have been given from all of the communities I work in, the incredible volunteers, the, um, the extraordinary Ani Brenda, who has mentored me through all of the cultural nuances over the last 14 years, Melissa Kirby from Brewarina, who has, with human kindness, shared a language that was shared to her so that we can share this with you. We're going to sing about the oldest man-made structure in the world. Yes, you did hear that correctly. That's the Brewarina fish traps. And the Brewarina fish traps are the most perfect manifestation of how to live your life not take more than you need, to sing, to dance, to live a life of possibility and abundance. The music that we're going to sing has been commissioned by Murrumbilla Voices by a wonderful Australian female composer called Josephine Gibson. We will be accompanied by extraordinary musicians. The artwork that you're going to see are photos from our region by Noni Carroll, and the movement that the children will do has been created by Jacob Williams. Thank you very much for having us.